chapter 9, and we'll start in verse 8. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We on the internet, Lex? Praise the Lord. We welcome those who may be watching live by internet or tuning in by internet radio. We welcome you tonight. Acts chapter 9, starting in verse 8. When you have it, you can either stand or just say amen, so I know everybody is ready. Praise the Lord. It's page 12, or 12, 1921 of your Expositor Study Bible. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody have it? Amen. And the Bible reads, And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. And we'll stop right there. And I just want to minister a few words tonight. The day Brother Saul got filled. <laughs> the day Brother Saul got filled. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your presence uh, tonight, Lord. And Father, I just ask that you continue to have your way, Lord, in hearts and lives. And let the real teacher and preacher continue to have his way tonight uh, through the preaching as well. And Lord, just uh, let this message encourage those, uh, Lord, to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. I won't hold you over too long tonight. Amen. I just want to get one point across. Amen. The day Brother Saul got filled. Amen. Brother Saul is also known as the Apostle Paul, amen. He was a Jew, but also, um, he was also born a Roman citizen, and so he had two names, amen. He had his Jewish name, Saul, and then he had his Roman name, Paul, amen. And Saul, he was supposed to be the next top groom Pharisee, amen, and he hated Christ with a passion. Amen. And he persecuted the church and tried to do everything he could to stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. But one day on the road to Damascus, he met the master. Amen. He met the savior. Amen. He met the king of kings and the Lord of lords. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And when he met the master, he saw the glory of the Lord and he was instantly blind from the glory. The glory of God is believed to be probably seven times brighter than the sun, S-U-N. That's why you can stare at the sun for a few seconds, turn away and still have your vision. But the minute Saul saw Jesus in all his glory, his vision was just wiped away. Amen. And the first thing he said was, Lord, what will you have me do? And he said, go into the city and it'll be told of what you're to do. Amen. And he went into that city and he prayed and he fasted. He didn't eat nothing for three days. Amen. He had a lot to pray about. He had killed Hundreds and maybe thousands of Christians and putting them in jail and torturing them, trying to stop the gospel. And then the Lord speaks to a man who loves the Lord named Ananias. And the Lord tells Ananias, go to a street called straight for there is Saul of Tarsus who is praying amen and I want you to go and pray for him and let him receive his vision and Ananias goes Lord could you repeat that one more time again uh, you do realize this is Saul of Tarsus we're talking about you do realize this is the one that has killed hundreds and maybe thousands and have imprisoned thousands. It didn't matter whether it was men, women, or children. Amen. He put them in jail, tortured them, killed them, did whatever he could to stop the gospel. Are you sure you want me to go? (laughs) 
I love this part about the Bible. The Lord doesn't even mention any of that. Why is that? Because his sins were washed away the minute he gave his heart and life to Christ. Ananias goes, Lord, you want to repeat that? And the Lord just tells him, go your way. He's a chosen vessel. The Lord doesn't say nothing about, well, yeah, I know he killed hundreds and thousands, but I can maybe. He just says, go your way. Amen. And go pray for him and lay hands on him. It's interesting to note that, first of all, when you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, you are no longer an enemy of God, but you are a friend of God, and he remembers nothing of any of your sins. Man may remember. Amen. The church world may remember, but God will never remember them. They're as far as the east is from the west. Amen. He tells Ananias, go your way. He is a chosen vessel. Amen. To bear my name before the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel. (laughs) There may be people out there that remembers your fault but God remembers them no more amen Amen. I said people will remember what you've done in the past amen but God won't remember it anymore amen and so Ananias goes to where Saul is and it says in verse 17 and Ananias went his way and entered into the house And putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul. (laughs) Brother Saul. Oh, I like that. Brother. Amen. Brother Saul. (laughs) The Lord, even Jesus, who appeared unto you in the way as you come, has sent me that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes that had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Amen. Ananias laid hands on Brother Saul the day Brother Saul got filled. Amen. Amen. Nobody could have dreamed what Brother Saul would accomplish. Amen. Being filled with the Holy Ghost and having the meaning of the new covenant. Amen. Planting churches. Amen. Amen. Where it would take the gospel completely around the world. The day Brother Saul got filled. Amen. We need to be filled tonight with the Holy Spirit. Amen. If Jesus needed it. If Brother Saul needed it. You better believe in these last days that we need it as well. Amen. And when he got filled. Amen. I said when he got filled with the Holy Spirit. People couldn't believe who was standing in front of them. The Bible says, first of all, in verse 19, that he went to the disciples which were at Damascus. First, he visited the disciples. Amen. Can you imagine that? Going in there, amen, and all the disciples knowing who you are. And he says, I'm Brother Saul. I met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Amen. I was once an enemy of God, but now I am a friend of him. And when he was preaching it and telling the other disciples, they had to be in shock and awe, not only of his testimony, but the power they felt as he preached the word and telling them. Of what had happened. And it says. And he straightway. He preached Christ. Into the synagogues. That he is the son of God. It didn't even stop with the disciples. He went out and started taking. And wanted to take it to the whole world. He just went amen. Not even thinking about it. He just went right into the synagogues. And told them. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Is the son of God. And can you imagine all the jaws that had dropped as he started preaching this with power? These were the people that wanted to arrest the Christians and kill them. Amen. But he goes in there with the boldness of the Holy Spirit and says, Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. The day Brother Saul got filled was a great day for the church. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. 
He got filled with the Holy Ghost, and it says he straightway started preaching the gospel. Amen. He just started taking it to everybody. Amen. He first went in and took it to the disciples and says, hey, boys, it's okay. I'm on your side. I met Jesus. I know who the master is, and I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then he went in to the synagogue. And these were the people, they were waiting for Saul. I mean, they were waiting for him to arrive. They was expecting Saul to come in, amen, and say, I have the orders from the high priest that we are to arrest these Christians and stamp them out in Damascus, amen. And I could imagine him walking in there, not saying a word, and everyone saying, shh, 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 Saul is finally here, amen. Let's see what he's going to have to say about these Christians. Yeah. And uh, you could probably hear as if a pin could drop. And then all of a sudden, Brother Saul of Tarsus, amen, steps up to the platform in the synagogue and says, this Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the son of the living God. And when he said it, he said it with power, amen, Holy Ghost boldness. The Jewish leaders got so angry that they wanted to kill Saul. Right there on the spot, amen. And it was the disciples that had to come to Saul and say, Paul, or Saul, you need to calm down a little bit. I can't calm down. There's a Holy Ghost fire in me, and I've got to tell these people that Jesus is the only way. Amen. <laughs> Holy Ghost power, amen. Brother Saul told his, I have to believe, he told the other side, I can't calm down. There's something burning inside of me, and I have to tell my Jewish brothers and sisters that they are wrong, that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And they say, Brother Saul, you need to get in the basket. We're going to lower you down the wall and get you out of here, or else you're going to get killed. Amen. Amen. But there was a Holy Ghost fire ever since he got filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. He couldn't shut up. Amen. He wouldn't back down. Amen. All he wanted to do was just keep preaching. He goes into Jerusalem and hunts out the apostles and says, Boys, I got saved. I got saved. I got saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's what Holy Ghost power does. Amen. Amen. It puts a fire in you. Amen. I can't shut up. I can't back down. I want to tell the whole world about Jesus. Amen. You don't have to live in your sins. Jesus died for you. The day Brother Saul got saved was a great day for the church. Amen. Because <laughs> it put a fire in him. Amen. And this would be the one who would get the meaning of the new covenant. Amen. And when you get the meaning of the new covenant and you've got Holy Ghost power to back you up, devil, look out. <laughs> And it says in verse 29, it says, And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Holy Ghost power does. gives you a boldness to speak about Jesus. Amen. It gives you a boldness to stand up for what is right. It gives you a boldness to tell the people that the only way is Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter whether it's friends. It doesn't matter whether it's family. It doesn't matter whether it's coworkers. Amen. They start mocking you and they start making fun of you and then you just want to back down but all of a sudden there is a fire shut up in your bones. That power upon you and you just can't stop from saying to yourself, I'm sorry you are wrong. Jesus Christ Christ is the way. Amen. Hallelujah. The day Brother Saul got saved, amen, he flipped the world upside down. Amen. Preaching the cross with Holy Ghost power. Amen. You can make fun. You can mock me. Amen. You can tell me to shut up, but I can't. Why is it? Because there is a power upon me. Amen. That I have received by grace due to the cross. And all I want to do is just shout it on the rooftops. All I want to do is tell every single person I come into contact with, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. You can be saved too. 
No, the baptism of the Holy Ghost doesn't save you, but it gives you a boldness to testify of your salvation. Amen. I'll say that again so we don't confuse it. The baptism of the Holy Ghost doesn't save you, but what it does do is give you a power to testify to others that you did get saved. Amen. <sighs> Hallelujah. The day Brother Saul got, set, or got uh, filled, amen, was a mighty day indeed for the church. This would be a man who would get the meaning of the new covenant, amen. When, when you get to have the understanding of the new covenant, you have that Holy Ghost power to back you up when you testify of it, amen. My Lord, devil, look out. I said, devil, look out. I said, devil, look out, amen. I said, devil, look out. I said, devil, look out. The day that the Lord birthed his light ministries and they had the meaning of the new covenant with the power to back it up. Devil, look out. We're taking back Deschler. Amen. Brother Saul, he couldn't shut up. He wouldn't back down. And think of this. He went straight way into the synagogue. This was the people he was going to talk to about arresting and killing the Christians. And they were all with him until he got saved and met the master and then got filled three days later. Amen. But that's why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit like uh, Brother Saul needed it. Amen. To have a Holy Ghost boldness to stand up for what is right and to testify to the people about Christ Jesus. Amen. Nobody knew what to make of Brother Saul. The apostles finally had to tell Brother Saul, you need to go home for a while and lay low until this thing blows. I don't want to lay low. Amen. I just want to tell people about Jesus. And the apostles tell Brother Saul, amen, they're going to kill you, amen. I mean, he went, he went straight way after he left, they lowered him out of the basket from Damascus, amen, and he took off and went into Jerusalem, found the apostles and said, I got saved, amen, I got saved, amen, you won't believe this, I got saved, I was coming to kill you, but I met Jesus and I got saved, amen, and then it says that he went out and started uh, disputing with the Grecians in Jerusalem. He said, hey, you guys over there, don't you know Jesus Christ can save you? Amen. Got all of Jerusalem in an uproar along with Damascus. Why is it? Because there was a Holy Ghost fire. There was a Holy Spirit boldness with him, him wanting to proclaim the truth about Christ. It says, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Paul, you need to go and lay low for a while. Amen. Until this thing blows over. The day Brother Saul got saved, my Lord, he stirred up the whole communities. Amen. With Holy Ghost power, proclaiming Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But that's what the Holy Spirit, amen, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is all about, amen. It's to, it gives us the potential for the power of God to be upon us, amen. amen. I'll say that again. It gives us the potential for the power of God to be upon us so that we can take Christ Jesus to the entire world. Amen. And it'll give us a fire within us to help the good to fight the good fight of faith. Jesus said in Acts 1.8 that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and on to the uttermost parts of the earth. That word witness means martyr. Amen. You'll be a martyr unto me. Amen. They'll want to shut you up. They'll want you to back down. They'll want you to not say anything about Jesus Christ. But he says, you shall receive power. Amen. And that power will quicken you and put a fire in you when you want to shut up. Amen. All of a sudden, there will be a supernatural power come upon you. And you just won't want to quit. You won't want to shut down. But all of a sudden, you'll want to shout and to the rooftops and tell them, it's Christ Jesus. 
It'll give us a boldness to proclaim Christ just as it did for Brother Saul. Amen. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if we don't have it, we're going to find ourselves in a heap of trouble. Amen. Because when we try to go out and take this message without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, we will probably resort to our own strengths, abilities, and flesh and find ourselves failing or backing down. Amen. We even see that with Peter. His motives were right, but when they went to crucify Christ, amen, and they tried to ask him, are you Peter? No. You're Peter. You're a disciple. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You was walking with Jesus. I'm telling you, I don't know who that man is. Amen. His motives were right because at the Last Supper, he said, Lord, I'm ready to go to jail with you. I'm ready to be killed. He loved the Lord. But without the Holy Ghost power, when persecution came his way, mm, I don't know who that man is. But after the day of Pentecost, I said after the day of Pentecost, there was a different Peter. Amen. After the road to Damascus and Brother Saul got hands laid on, there was a different Saul. Amen. At one time, that power made Saul grit his teeth. Oh, I can't stand it. We got to kill these Christians. They're talking about Jesus. But after he got, gave his heart and life to Jesus Christ and got filled with power, he was no longer gritting his teeth, amen, but he was showing those pearly whites smiling, saying, I got saved, I got saved, I got saved on the road to Damascus. <laughs> Again, the baptism of the Holy Ghost doesn't save you, so don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Amen. But what it does do is give you a Holy Ghost boldness to proclaim your salvation. Amen. When you accepted Christ Jesus by faith. And that is exactly what the church needs in these last hours. Amen. Holy Ghost boldness to proclaim that the cross still works. The blood is still available. Jesus is still real. Amen. Gives us a boldness to proclaim Christ. Just as it did for Brother Saul. Amen. Just as it did for Brother Saul. I know, folks, it's Apostle Paul. I just like saying Brother Saul. Amen. Because he's a brother in the Lord. Brother Saul. Amen. People were able to sense the presence of the Lord because the power was not only in him, but upon him. I'll say that again. People were able to sense the presence of the Lord because not only was the power in him working in him, but it was upon him working through him. And that's what the baptism of the Holy Ghost does. Amen. The Holy Spirit dwelling in us is for that power to work in us to deal with our sin issues. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is so the power can be upon us and work through us to others. So others may sense the presence of the Lord. Do you understand that? Because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Amen. I said it's the anointing that breaks through hardened hearts. It's not how well I can preach it. It's not how well Sister Michelle can preach it. Amen. But it is the anointing that is upon us due to being spirit filled that will break that yoke and get through that hardened heart. Amen. That's right. And that anointing flows as we preach with Holy Ghost boldness about the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we testify the blood of Jesus Christ, that Holy Ghost power will take that message straight to their heart and break through that hardened heart. Amen. Breaking the yoke through the anointing and that's why we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost amen and people being spirit filled within our churches amen I'll just testify a few minutes time and again I've been in hospitals where somebody would ask me to go to the hospital and pray for somebody and this one time I was in the Lima hospital I was at actually I was at work and a man was dying, and his grandson was working with me and said, could you please, 
and I testified that I was a preacher, and I gave him my testimony and such. And he said, could you please pray with my grandfather? He's Catholic, and I don't know where he is with the Lord. And I said, well, I'll go to the hospital right after work, and I'll pray with him. And I went there to the hospital. He gave me the room number and such, and I went into the hospital, and there his mother was in the waiting room. And, of course, out of respect, I went to the mother, and I said, are you so-and-so? And she said, well, yes, I am. And I said, well, your son sent me to pray with your father. I said, would it be okay if I went into the room with your permission and pray for him? And she said, absolutely. And so we went into the room, and he was in a, uh, what looked like to be a coma. And I don't know whether it was cancer or what. They didn't really say. But he was in a coma state, and he was not conscious. But the doctors, uh, she relayed to me that the doctors say he can still hear. He can still listen. He's not responsive on the outside, but he can still listen. The doctors say that he can still hear. And, I, and she says, uh, we've already had three priests come in here and pray for him, so I don't know what you're going to do. And I said, well, just give me a shot. And she says, well, have at it. And I, and I sat down beside the man, and I said, sir, and I called his name, and I said, I'm... Brother Brad, and I said, I'm a minister, and I said, I want to make sure your uh, life is right with the Lord. And I started telling him that his only answer was faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, and that if he would accept Christ, amen, into his heart and life and believe that he died for his sins, that the Holy Ghost would come into him, amen, and dwell in him, and his sins would be washed away. And I, and I explained to him, I said, I'm going to lay hands on you and I'm going to pray the prayer of faith and believing that you're hearing me and that you're praying it right along with me within your heart and that you're going to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. And I looked over at the, uh, the lady and I, and the, or his daughter and I said, could you pray it along with me? And she says, well, yes, I can pray along with you. Amen. And I laid hands on that man. And now, and listen, this is a Catholic lady, her whole life, amen, and if you know the Catholic community, they don't pray to Jesus, they pray to Mary. And then so I started the sinner's prayer, and I said, dear God in heaven, amen, and she repeated it, and I said, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and I continued on with the sinner's prayer, and in the sinner's prayer, I prayed and said, uh, Lord, forgive me of all the things I've done. Wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ. Forgive me of my sins. And I believe by faith that I'm saved, that I'm born again, that I'm right with you. And she was repeating it her eye along with me, and the tears started coming down the cheeks. And then I proceeded after I did the sinner's prayer to lay my hand on his head, amen, and I just started praying that the Lord comfort him and heal him and touch him. And of course, I had my eyes closed at this point and praying for him for several minutes. And after I was done, I took my hands off of him and I looked over and there she is standing. And she says, do you realize what had happened? And I said, well, what? She goes, the minute you put your hand on his head, he started responding. And she says, three priests have been in here. But when you came in and you started praying, I sensed God for the first time in my life. It wasn't because of Brother Brad. But it was because of the power of the Holy Spirit and the presence that people would feel as that power would be upon us and work through us. Amen. But that is why we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost so people, it's for service, so people can sense the presence of the Lord and know that God is real, that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and that it's just not a fairy tale, but He is King of kings, He is Lord of lords, He is alive, He is sitting at the right hand of the Father, and He is coming back.
Two years ago, we was doing an outreach. And of course, me and Michelle were at the table. And a man, I won't give his name, Bob. It's not his name, but that's what I'm making his name tonight. Came up to the table and his friend, his cousin. What's another good name? No, we've got a Tom here. We need another one. Todd, thank you. Todd will be a good one. Bob and Todd. But Bob and Todd, I can't do that. that with syllables. <laughs> we'll call them John and, John and Smith. Amen. Sorry, syllables. So John and Smith came up to the table. And both were inebriated with alcohol. And they both had beers in their hand and you could smell the alcohol coming off their breath and of course they came up to mock and and they did they said so you're a preacher and I said yes I'm a preacher you know well what's your church like and then I go on to explain and the man said you know every time that I got in trouble my dad would make me sit down and read a few scriptures. And looking at him and judging by the appearance, I know we're not supposed to judge by the appearance, but the first thing that caught, came to mind is like, boy, you probably know the Bible better than I do then, as much trouble as you've been in. And he said, I could probably do circles around you in scriptures. I could probably out-debate you if I wanted to. And the whole time I'm praying, Lord, what do I do? You know, he's probably right. Amen. As much trouble as he got, and he probably does know all the scriptures better than I do. And he can probably counter any scripture I give him with something else. I said, Lord, what do I do? And the Holy Spirit dropped the scripture in my heart instantly, and I thought, okay. And so I stood up, and, I, and the man was about a foot bigger than me, and the man had been in gangs. He was up here with visiting some families, and he lifted up his shirt, and he proceeded. He says, you know, right here is where I got shot, and then he said, right here is where I got stabbed. And he had the scars, and he was about a foot taller than me, and he was probably a foot wider than me, and he wasn't fat. He was muscle, and, and so a little fat preacher stands up to him, and I just looked up at him because I was looking up at him, and I said, sir, you're right. You probably could out-debate me in scriptures. I said, but this is what the Lord wanted me to tell you. I said, there was a rich young ruler. And he did everything that he was supposed to do. Paid tithes, went to church, read the Bible, knew it front to back. And he says, but then Jesus told him something that he lacked one thing. He said, sell everything that you have and come follow me. And I looked at the man straight in the eye and I said, sir, the Lord is telling you, you're lacking one thing. And I pointed to his alcohol and I said, sell it and come follow Jesus. And all of a sudden, a man who was drunk, cold sober, and started weeping. And said, I, I have to get out of here. I have to go. And I said, well, what's... I said, what's the matter? He says, that, that touched me right here. He says, and he backed up and he said, I have to go. And he walked away. Amen. And his cousin Smith just stood there in shock and awe. And he's like, Bob, where are you going? Bob. And he walks off, not even paying attention, weeping. He says, Bob, come back. And he's trying to follow him to get his friend back. The man came back an hour later and said, is it okay if I just sit with you for a little while and talk? I said, absolutely. And the man sat down, pulled up a chair, sat down, and we started talking about Jesus for a good one to two hours. It wasn't me that did it. It was the presence and the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Spirit that broke through. 
when I testified about the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what the church desperately needs in these last hours as we proclaim the blood of Jesus Christ. People being filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost. It will be a help unto us taking this gospel forward because it is the anointing that can break the yoke. It is the power of God that people will sense. It gives the potential for the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation to confirm the word that the blood of Jesus Christ is true. The Lord said, if you're not going to believe it for my sake, then believe it for my work's sake. It gives the potential for the gifts of the Spirit. In other words, if you're not going to believe the anointing, well then believe me when I have a family reunion at a funeral. Believe me when I start walking on water. Believe me when a man who has cancer is instantaneously healed and the doctors can't find anything. It gives the potential for the gifts of the Spirit to operate. Showing signs and wonders, confirming the word to the people that Jesus Christ is true, it's real, and God is really coming back. The day Brother Saul got filled was a day the church would never forget. They didn't know what to do with Brother Saul. Amen. He started preaching in Damascus. He went to the disciples, and then he went in the synagogue to the people that wanted to kill the Christians. He just started preaching it. Says he immediately, he didn't even have to think about it. The power of God was on him. He went straight way in there. Amen. The disciples had to calm Brother Saul down, <laughs> lower him out of a basket off the side of the wall, and get him out of the town. He heads over to Jerusalem. Amen. He goes out and finds the other apostles. He finds Peter, James, John. He says, You boys ain't going to believe this. I was going to kill you, but now I'm saved. And he couldn't even stop there. He sees uh, some of the Grecians and goes out and starts trying to tell them about Jesus Christ, disputing with them. It's in verse 29. And they didn't like it either. They wanted to kill him too. And when the brethren knew about it, <laughs> they said, Brother Saul, you need to calm down. I can't calm down. Jesus has done something in me, and he's working through me, and I don't want to stop now. Yeah. Brother Saul, you need to go home back to Tarsus for a little while. Let this thing blow over. But that's what the power of God does in our lives. It gives us a quickening supernatural power like a fire shut up in our bones where we just want to tell people about Christ Jesus. You, Brother Brad, are you just trying to be a fanatic? I don't have to try to be a fanatic. I am a fanatic. Amen. I love Jesus. I love sensing his presence. I love reading the Bible. I love coming to church. I love coming an hour early with my lovely wife and practice songs and watch her sing. I can't help it. The world can do whatever it wants to want to do. I want to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. I said, I want to follow Jesus. The day Brother Saul got filled was a day the church would never forget. Amen. He turned, amen, he straightway in Damascus and Jerusalem and just flipped the towns upside down being on fire for God. Because it gives us a supernatural fire within us, quickening us, wanting us to tell people about Christ Jesus. Amen. Gives us a fire where we don't want to shut down or back down. And when we do, that fire will roar up in us. Amen. And to help us fight the good fight of faith and believe to press through with faith in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Gives us a boldness to proclaim Christ in the face of persecution. Persecution. 
I seen on the news, amen, it was uh, internet news and I don't know how true it is, so, but there was a news article in there where it talked about Hillary and uh, things that she wanted to change if she became president and that how when laws changed that Christians were just going to have to deny their faith because that the laws are going to change. Amen. I know Hillary won't probably ever watch his light ministries, but if you do, click on it. Amen. I don't care how many secret service people you got around you. I ain't shutting up. I ain't quitting. I will not stop preaching Jesus Christ. I will not deny the faith. What is it better for me to do? Obey God or obey man. I choose God. Amen. But that's what the baptism of the Holy Ghost does. It gives you a boldness. Amen. It gives you a power to proclaim the truth, which is Christ and Him crucified. And that's what our church desperately needs. Amen. Amen. You know why our country is in a mess? Because the church has shut up. That's why. It's why our country's in a mess, because the church has backed down, they've shut up, and they're too scared to proclaim anything, because they're afraid of their tax status, they're afraid of what the government may do. They're afraid of the laws that may be imposed on them. And the Lord's got a surefire way to remedy the whole situation. Amen. If people will just get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. If people will just get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because I'm telling you, persecution is coming. How do you know that? Because with every move of God, with great move of God, comes great persecution. And there is a great harvest coming. And don't you think the devil is going to do everything he can to try to stop it? And great persecution will happen. I don't know whether it'll come through ISIS. I don't know whether it'll come through crooked government officials. That's right. I don't know whether it'll come through the apostate church. I don't know. But all I do know is great persecution is coming. And God is drawing a line in the sand. And just as Moses said, you are going to have to choose whose side are you on. That's right. And you are going to need it. To be on the right side. I said you're going to need that helping hand of God to be on the right side. When persecution comes our way. And it is coming. I pray God. That the right man get in office. And we have four more years of revival. I pray and I hope for it. But I also know that sooner or later. Great persecution is going to come with the great revival. Because the devil's always going to try to shut it down. And we are going to need Holy Ghost power to continue pressing forward when persecution comes our way. Just like it was with Brother Saul the day he got filled. They wanted to kill him. Don't you think if somebody tried to kill you and lowered you out of basket, you think you would be quiet for a little while. But he didn't. Because he had power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He went right on to Jerusalem. Amen. And started preaching it again anyways. The day Brother Saul got filled. The apostles themselves, the original 12 needed it. Think about it. They needed that power to proclaim it to the other Jews. And think of this. The Jews had just crucified Christ 50 days prior. But because of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they were still able to proclaim it to a people that had killed Christ 50 days earlier. Think about that. That's how important the baptism of the Holy Ghost is. If we don't have it, not much work's going to get done. Not much 
preaching is going to get done. But we see the day Brother Saul got filled. Amen. They wanted to kill him, but that didn't matter. He went to another city and just started preaching it again. And that's what the church desperately needs in this last in its last few hours to proclaim Christ and Him crucified, being filled with the Holy Spirit. I know here in America, we don't really know much about persecution, and so most of the church world don't think we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost because we've never experienced persecution. We really haven't. So we don't know what it's like, and we think we don't need it. We got freedom of religion. I don't have to worry about a whip on my back. I don't have to worry about handcuffs. I don't have to worry about jail. I'm not prophesying, but mark my words. When this latter harvest comes, persecution is going to follow. Mark my words. Again, I'm not saying thus saith the Lord. But what I am saying, every time I see it in the Bible, whenever there is a great move of God, there is also great persecution. And there is going to be one last big move of God where I believe hundreds and thousands are going to give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. I believe the lot down there is going to be too small. I really do. I really, really do. And we are going to need that power for people to sense the presence of God in these last days and to be able to stand up to persecution when and if it comes our way. It's not a matter of, I shouldn't really say if, because it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I said it's a matter of when. But we need to take a lesson from Brother Saul. <laughs> he had no problem getting filled. Because he knew he was going to need it. Amen. He was waiting for it. The Lord had already showed him. I'm going to send Ananias to you. He's going to lay hands on you. He's going to pray for you. And you're going to receive something great. He was waiting to receive it. Amen. That's how the Christians need to be. Need to be praying for it. Seeking for it. Asking for it. Like what brother Saul was doing. Amen. Expecting to receive something. And guess what? Brother Saul received something. All right. Amen. He received Holy Ghost power. I said he received Holy Ghost power. I said if he, he received Holy Ghost power. If Jesus needed it in his ministry. If Brother Saul needed it in his ministry. The most Christ-like man that's probably ever walked the face of the earth. How much more do we need it? The day Brother Saul got filled. When you get filled, people will mock you, make fun of you. They will curse you. They will persecute you. But there will be a fire in you just like there was Brother Saul just wanting to take it to the next town. As I said in work, the one day, as I testified about work the one day, I had a man come up to me and he was Jewish. I won't give the man's name. And we was at the time clocks and... He said, hey, preacher. And I said, what? And he proceeded to give me, I'll just be nice about it. He gave me the bird and said an F word. But a Holy Ghost fire, I couldn't do nothing but smile and love the man. And said, they said and did the same thing that Jesus Christ, and he still loves him. And I love you too. Amen. 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 And he sensed the presence of the Lord. It was just like scripture being fulfilled. His face got all red and he gritted his teeth. Can't believe he still loves me. <laughs> but that's what the Holy Spirit does. It gives you a boldness to proclaim it. And where people sense the presence of the Lord. And we're going to need it. And for the gifts to operate to confirm the word. That the blood of Jesus Christ is true. It is real and it is right. Amen.
The day Brother Saul got filled was definitely a day indeed the church will remember. He stirred up Damascus. He stirred out Jerusalem. He was stirring up everywhere where the apostles had to say, Brother, they're going to kill you. I know, but I can't help it. I love Jesus. You need to go back home to Tarsus for a little while. And so he went on back to Tarsus, where, of course, we know that while he was in Tar Tarsus, he got the meeting of the new covenant as for sanctification. And boy, when he got the meaning of the new covenant for sanctification, he had the Holy Ghost power to back it up. My Lord. He did wonders for Christ. But it all started out with him, first of all, getting saved. That's the only requirement to be filled with the Holy Ghost, is being saved. And we know he was saved because Ananias said, Brother Saul, which means he was a brother. He was saved. That's all you need for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Just be saved. That's it. You don't have to be part of His Light Ministries. You don't have to be part of Family Worship Center. All you have to do is be Christ's. Be saved. But it starts out with being saved. And the next thing the Lord wants us to do is do what Brother Saul did. Pray and seek for it. The Lord showed him Ananias was coming. Amen. He knew he was going to get healed and get filled. And, and he was waiting. And he was praying, expecting to receive something. And that's how the Lord wants us to be. Amen. The Lord's already laid it on your heart. And you know God wants you to be filled. And we need to be like Brother Saul. The day Brother Saul got filled. Praying, expecting to receive something from God. And guess what? He'll pour it out on you just like he did Brother Saul. Amen. The day he got filled. Hang on a second. There is no certain prayer that you say. There is no certain actions you have to do except just believe and receive it. Amen. All you have to do, just like you got saved. What did you do to get saved? Nothing but just say, Lord, I accept it, I believe it, and I receive it. And whammo, the Holy Spirit came in. It's the same way with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The hardest part for people is just yielding. There is no certain trick to it. Same way, works the same way how you got saved. You just say, Lord, I believe it, I'm expecting it, I want it, and I receive it. And the minute you do that by faith, you're going to start sensing the presence of the Lord within your spirit. And he's going to start speaking to you. Amen. And you're going to sense an utterance. Now here's where the faith comes in. Step out and speak it. That's it. And the minute you start speaking it, amen, he starts pouring it out upon you. And you'll find yourself endued with power from on high. And it'll start flowing out from you like a river. That's, that's all it is. There's no certain trick to it. Just say, Lord, I believe it. I receive it. I want it. And expect him to give it to you. Amen. And you will sense his presence within you. He's not out here saying, I want to He's right here within you. That's right. And he's going to speak to you. And you start sensing and hearing him. And by faith, just speak the utterance. And guess what? Jesus then just starts pouring it out on you. It's that simple, folks. Amen. Well, Brother Brad, it was only a syllable. <laughs> That's all you need. And he'll start growing that language. Amen. Your lips may stammer a little bit, just like when you do when you get a cold chill. With stammering lips will I speak unto this people. Just let it flow. Let the lips stammer and let those few syllables or words or sentences just come on out. And just praise and worship Him. All you're doing is magnifying the wonderful works of God. Amen. And guess what? That power of God will be upon you. And then when you get around people, they're going to sense something. They're going to know something. Amen. Because it's the power of God upon you. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? 
just do what the brother Saul did the day he got filled. He prayed, he was praying, expecting to receive something, and he did. And it's the same way with us to anyone who wants to be filled. You have to want it, and you have to expect and believe God wants to give it to you, and he will. God doesn't choose saying, I want to fill you, and then I want, no, not you, yes, you, not you. He wants to fill everybody. He wants every sinner saved, and he wants every saint filled. I'll say that again. He wants every sinner saved, and he wants every saint filled. And all you have to do, the day Brother Saul got filled, believe it, expect it, and receive it. And he will put the words within you, and here's where the faith comes in. He's not going to take over your mouth. Amen? Some would say, well, Brother Brad, that's me speaking it. You're the one we're trying to get filled. You have to step out by faith and just say it. Amen. Amen. And it'll flow out of you. And just like Brother Saul, you'll never be the same. I said, you'll never be the same. Amen. That includes you on internet as well. Praise the Lord. If you need a filling or a refilling, just lift your hands tonight. There's nothing to be ashamed about. Just expect it and receive it. Open your mouth, yield your tongue, and start speaking what you sense. And God will fill you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yield the tongue and just start speaking it. And he will fill you. Hallelujah. You on internet right now, whether you're listening by internet radio or by our webcast, expect it and receive it. Yield your tongue and let him fill you. And just step out by faith and speak what you sense. Let him fill you with power. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let him refill you tonight or let him fill you for the first time, whether here or on internet. Praise the Lord. Living waters will flow out of our inner bellies. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. you Lord yes Lord in the name of Jesus Lord pour your spirit out on your people yes Lord the Lord. Praise the Lord. He wants to fill you. I said he wants to fill you. I mean, you don't have to be at church to be filled. You can be filled behind that computer screen. You can be filled in front of that smart device. You can be filled going down the car. You can be filled at home. You can ask him just like my wife did for him to wake you up in the middle of the night and fill you. He may fill you while you're sitting on the couch waiting for your water baptism as he did me. He wants to fill you. Amen. And all we have to do is believe it, expect it, and just receive it. And he will give you that unction and you step out by faith and just start letting it flow out. And he will fill you with power from on high. It doesn't make you any more saved, but what it will do is give you a boldness to proclaim about your salvation that has already taken place when you accepted the blood of Jesus Christ. And we are going to need that power in these last days. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And Father, I just ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, Lord, you laid this message heavily on my heart this afternoon. And Father, I just ask whoever it was for, Lord, that they believe it, they expect it, and that you help them by your grace to yield and receive it. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless all of you and we'll see you next service. Amen.